so there is no issue on the uh, uh, course enrollment. Um, we have uh, sufficient spaces, so all those uh, who are interested and uh, who are uh, who have an IAC account should be able to be here. The reason the IAC account is uh, we are putting all the course material in Piazza for this course, so you know you need that to to be able to access the material. Okay, so that's about the only requirement. So whether you are uh, registered or whether you are auditing, that's fine with me. And the classroom space uh, seems adequate. So that's the good news. So uh, I want to talk about a little bit of the plan for uh, uh, the next uh, two weeks. Uh, so uh, as you know, on the first week I mentioned, we are following roughly the structure of the uh, Goodfellow Bengio uh, book on deep learning. So the chapters come around like that. And, uh, uh, but uh, the material has been you know, enhanced and expanded and this requires more explanation and so on. So it's not exactly that material, but if you want to follow it, uh, it, uh, you know, it is there for you to look at. Uh, and uh, so first one was an overview. That's what we did last week. And the, I believe the next chapter, I forget the exact chapter numbers, must be chapter two, is uh, linear algebra for machine learning. And chapter three is uh, probability theory for machine learning, uh, you know, roughly that order. And then the next one is, I think, uh, basics of machine learning, right? And some of you now are a mixed bag in the sense, some of you have not had a machine learning course and and half of you have had a machine learning course, but we're not wasting too much time. I think it's always worth uh, uh, reviewing some of that material. So this week is uh, this topic uh, that is only today. Wednesday is there's no class. So it's just, uh, you know, I'll spend about half the time on linear algebra and half the time on probability theory. It might be repetitious to some of you, but uh, anyway, I found it interesting the way it's presented in terms of, ah, oh, there are some interesting aspects of machine learning. So it's kind of stated as linear algebra, not just linear algebra, linear algebra for machine learning. Uh, and of course, we have in mind that what we are learning is deep learning. And uh, next week's topic again is uh, is uh, basics of machine learning next to Monday and Wednesday. And we also um, uh, formalize, we mean, meaning me and the, the teaching assistants, uh, on the uh, nature of the quizzes. And this Wednesday, there's no quiz. We'll have a practicum for half an hour after my one hour lecture today. The practicum, practicum will uh, discuss uh, the project one, which I think you have it, right? Project one is uh, to implement a, uh, a, a simple pro project uh, on uh, doing the FISBUS project. They will talk about it a bit more uh, in the practicum section. Uh, it's a very trivial problem, um, but it makes it interesting in that focus is not on the kind of images or anything you create the data set yourself uh, to learn uh, to learn the uh, learn software 2.0 perhaps the machine learning approach to the problem as opposed to the conventional programming approach right right i think i mentioned in the first day of class that uh, um, computer science is moving from programming to showing okay programming is you sit and write the code to do fizzbuzz if do, which says the number is divisible by three or five and so on. And uh, the uh, showing method is I give you some examples and say, uh, what's the answer for uh, 15? You say buzz, right? Uh, uh, or, you know, it's fizz buzz, actually. Uh, it's divisible by three and five, so it's fizz buzz. Uh, and, and so on. So you get a lot of examples and it has to learn. So uh, so that's what's being illustrated uh, over there. And uh, But the point of that project is not so much that you're solving a, an exciting problem, Seems like the machine learning approach uh, seems cumbersome, but you have to go through uh, issues there about uh, the design of the architecture, uh, how many layers, uh, you know, what happens if I increase by one, from one layer to two layers, or I increase the number of hidden units in one layer. You play around with some of these things, what happens? So the focus is not on the intricacies of the images or the data sets and all that. It's more on, on the machine learning part of it. Uh, and so hopefully that will be uh, very illustrative to you. Uh, and then you can also play around with the hyperparameters, such as the learning rate in, during gradient descent uh, and uh, you know, the stopping criterion and whatnot. Um, so uh, I, I leave it to um, uh, Aditya 
uh, we'll, we'll talk about it, right? So, so we can do that part. And they will, they, they, they will also talk about the uh, submission criteria and things like that, how, how they want to see it, so on. I know. So that'll, those directions you'll, you'll, you'll get from them. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's the plan. So today, half an hour, you'll get on, on, on the practicum. And there's no quiz this week. Next week on Wednesdays, uh, they, so we're going to have a lag between the uh, topic and the quiz. I think most students like it. I was initially uh, planning on having the quiz in the same week the lecture was given on Wednesday, but now with the Shankranti coming up on Wednesday, it's postponed by a week. Maybe it's, it's good for all of you and we'll keep it like that. So, so you will be reviewing linear algebra and probability theory uh, this week and, and the weekend and you know, until, until next Wednesday. And you'll take a quiz for half an hour on uh, next week, Wednesday, on linear algebra and probability theory. And then from the week onwards, you'll we'll be going into uh, other topics such as basics of machine learning. And then we go into some other topics. Uh, I forget the exact sequence now, but I think it's probably convolutional neural networks is the next thing. And um, so on, recurrent neural networks, um, practical deep learning, and so on. So we'll, we'll run through that. And uh, we are budgeting the time very carefully. You only have so many weeks in the semester, and we really want to touch upon all the major topics and not spend too much time on the introductory material here. But we need this stuff uh, so that we are comfortable material that's coming up afterwards. So that's the, uh, that's the plan for the rest of the semester, right? Does that, that, does that address all of the issues? OK. So anyone who that I see can can be can be here in this course, either auditing or uh, or registering and so on. Happy to have you here. Okay. All right. I came across this cartoon. All right. Uh, you know these blogs are uh, that uh, that you know many youngsters like you probably put up is uh, interesting. Importance of linear algebra and machine learning. So uh, this guy on this pile is saying. Uh, the question is being asked, uh, this is your machine learning system? And he's looking on, on a pile over here, and he says, yep, you pour the data into, the, into this big pile of linear algebra, then collect the answers on the other side. So this is, uh, you, pour, you pour your data, this the pile of linear algebra, you know, there's so many uh, multiplications of matrices and all that that's happening over here. And this is a process, and you, you input the data here, you collect the answers here. So I said, that's what machine learning is. Uh, and uh, he says, what uh, if the answers are wrong? And the answer is, uh, just stir the pile until they start looking right. All right, so you can think of machine learning is just stirring this pile of linear algebra. Uh, so what, what do you mean, stirring the pile of linear algebra is, uh, I suppose, the weights, right? The, the kind of... Uh, uh, values you're multiplying, multiplying it by, and so on. So you keep on uh, doing it until you are satisfied. The answers are coming out. So anyway, just a, a interesting cartoon about summarizing uh, machine learning, uh, and, and that uh, linear algebra plays a role in a lot of it. So, um, what is it we need to do about uh, what do you know about uh, linear algebra for machine learning? Uh, so the questions here are. are uh, why do we need linear algebra? And uh, from scalars to tensors, you know, why do they call it tensor flow, for instance? Uh, and, uh, and that's the flow of tensors in machine learning. And um, you know, the other stuff is standard linear algebra, matrix operations, determinant, inverse, et cetera, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, singular value, decomposition, principal component analysis. Wow, that's a lot of topics now. Um, and uh, in the olden days, uh, all of uh, the, uh, a course on machine learning or pattern recognition might have been just this, you know, SVD and, and uh, you know, PCA and so on. But we, we now think of it as, all right, that's just the linear algebra part of machine learning. I won't be able to go over all of this. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just point out the major highlights and uh, you will be reviewing all of this material. Make sure that you are comfortable with, with, with all of this. So that's what I have here. If my explanations are not good enough, uh, of course, the, the source material is there, and there's so much of it is available uh, online as well. So it's an interesting uh, question. So we are, we are not looking at things uh, as a 
as a pure linear algebra course, we're always asking, why do we need it? And uh, says, well, so first of all, what is linear algebra? Uh, it's the branch of mathematics concerning linear equations. So it's a linear equation in the sense, supposing a set of n variables, x1 through xn, we multiply each of them by uh, some values a1 through an to give you another value b, and we, uh, uh, in, in vector of notation, we say that's the same as a transpose x. It's kind of notation standard now in machine learning and pattern recognition and so on. We use uh, bold symbols to represent vectors and scalars uh, 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 as, uh, as italics, right? So called a linear transformation of x. And uh, linear algebra is fundamental to geometry. We're defining objects such as lines, planes, rotations. So when we write an equation a1x1 through a1xn equal to b, actually it, it turns out it defines a plane in uh, in x1 through xn space. So that a plane is is defined by uh, an equation uh, of this sort, and uh, in this in this three-dimensional space, a plane uh, is uh, is represented by this equation, whereas straight lines on them define common solution to equations. So there is a geometric correspondence, something to be aware of. So then the question is, uh, why do we need to know this kind of stuff? Uh, and uh, the point here is linear algebra is used throughout engineering. It's a common thing, you know, most, en most engineers use it. Um, and it is based on continuous math, uh, math rather than disc discrete mathematics. On the other hand, computer scientists, which I think many of you are, uh, have little experience with it. So there's kind of a peculiar transition here. Most engineers know linear algebra, but not computer scientists. <laughs> and so computer scientists need to go, go about learning this stuff, uh, maybe for the first time, and saying, okay, I better pay attention to that. All right, it is essential for understanding machine learning algorithms uh, to convert input vectors to outputs by a series of linear transformations. So that's what happens in these uh, deep learning algorithms. We are doing a series of linear transformations. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about linear transformation in, based on linear algebra. So it is essential for uh, understanding machine learning algorithms. And uh, uh, so we discuss concepts of linear algebra needed for machine learning and omit other aspects of linear algebra. So there is, there is a lot in, you know, in, in this basic topic in, in, in mathematics. So the kind of linear algebra topics that you may want to review are, uh, you know, what are scalars, vectors, matrices, tensors, uh, multiplying matrices and vectors. That's important because, you know, we present the input as, uh, let's say, as a vector, and then we multiply it by matrices, right? And we grow from one layer to the next layer, there's a complete interconnection, we'd have a matrix multiplication going on. Uh, and then uh, the ideas of identity, inverse matrix matrices come into play, linear dependencies, uh, norm, norms of uh, vectors and special kinds of matrices, eigen decomposition, singular value decomposition, Moore, Penrose, pseudo inverse, trace operator, determinant, example, principal component analysis. All right, that's in, enough to want you to quit <laughs> learning, deep learning perhaps. No, uh, it's all there. And of course, you can always go and uh, go review, the, review the material as you, as you need it. I think it, it's always better to uh, be motivated to learn something rather than simply ask you, ask to learn it, right? Um, so that's a nice thing, you know. In deep learning, you you are you're saying we're going to use all these ideas. So uh, at least you know where to look. All right. So you know, scalars, of course, basic stuff. A single number, a scalar, in contrast to other objects in linear algebra, which are usually arrays of numbers. Vectors, an array of numbers are arranged in order. And uh, example of a vector given here, the picture is that of a vector. And then matrices is a 2D array of numbers. So we're going from scalar single numbers to vectors to matrices, a two-dimensional array. And we refer to, uh, this is an interesting uh, point here. If uh, we refer to the, uh, the uh, number of rows and the number of columns in a, in a matrix as the shape of that matrix. So that's kind of inter interesting terminology. I'm not sure uh, uh, the mathematics linear algebra people uh, ever refer to a matrix by its shape. So this might be a, uh, a, a machine learning terminology is the shape of the matrix. The height M and width N uh, defines the shape of the matrix. So now what is a tensor is uh, sometimes we need an array with more than two axes. 
An example is uh, a color image. So if you have a red, green, blue uh, uh, filters uh, uh, to define a color image, RGB image, uh, you now need uh, a, a three axes corresponding to red, green, and blue. And in each axis, you're going to, you have a full, full uh, matrix, right? So now you need a third dimension. So there is right away an example that is not enough to talk about scalars, vectors, and uh, and uh, matrices. We also need another concept of a three-dimensional matrix, which is uh, now a tensor. We say of tensors of three dimensions. And uh, so in general, a tensor is an array of numbers arranged on a regular grid with a variable number of axes. And we'll have a figure next. And, um, and then some notation here about how tensors are denoted and this is a picture here illustrating a 0d tensor a 1d tensor a 2d tensor a 3d tensor uh, so 3d tensor is useful for a color image you would say because you are processing a color image in a deep learning network so the 3d tensor is being processed uh, at every layer by some matrix multiplications and so um, what if we have uh, a video instead of uh, simply a color image so now we have a need in another dimension, which is a which is a fourth dimension. So we can think of it as uh, now a 4D tensor is a sequence of these uh, 3Ds together, all of which defines a 4D tensor. And we can be more general about it, saying you know maybe a set of videos or something, right? So we can go on like that and refer to all of these as uh, as tensors. And of course, you know a one-dimensional tensor there, all it is is a set of numbers like this. And a two-dimensional center a tensor is now going into an additional dimension. And then we are placing two of them together to define a 3D tensor and so on. So this is uh, basically uh, the terminology. Um, and tensors are well known in engineering. And uh, those of you who are from different engineering disciplines, it, it was not something invented by computer science people doing deep learning. So it had existed a, a long time. And we're just borrowing all of this kind of stuff. Um, okay, this is a slide I put in some time ago, you know, about how they are dealt with in Python. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it to Aditya and uh, the other TAs to talk about uh, uh, your implementations and so on. I don't know how, how many of you uh, have, ex have been exposed to Python, and this is the opportunity. It's a simple project that you're doing on project one to come up to speed on Python and NumPy and so on, which is a library which is a standard library for Python to do all kinds of uh, uh, matrix manipulations and so on. So it shows how a zero dimensional tensor, a one dimensional tensor, two dimensional tensor are defined. So on to a few more uh, topics that uh, you may want to review what is meant by transpose of a matrix, uh, which is a, getting a mirror image across a diagonal line. And, uh, and we talk about, now, vectors are matrices with a single column, all right? We can refer to a vector as a special case. And then uh, ideas of uh, matrix addition. Uh, and uh, machine learning has brought in a few new, new uh, ideas into mathematics itself, which is kind of interesting. That, you know, the mathematicians define all this stuff, but uh, machine learning people came by and said, hey, we need more than what you've got, and we'll define it. And uh, even though you have never defined some of these terms, that's what we need. And less conventional notation is used in machine learning. A vector added to a matrix called broadcasting. And uh, some of this terminology uh, may not be in mathematics. Actually, there's one terminology, it was very interesting. Uh, I came across in, in some uh, deep learning uh, uh, material, uh, you know, this symbol that A, this is the coin symbol here, A coin B. What is this? And uh, I had a bit of a hard time Googling that. You know, supposing you say, I want to Google what is A coin B, uh, how do you define this? Um, and uh, so uh, so this is uh, not the standard matrix product. I mean, the, the matrix multiplication is pretty standard, right? You've got two matrices you can multiply as long as their shapes are right. Okay, the one shape of one is M by N, the other, other shape is N by P, and their product has the shape M by P, right? That's the standard matrix multiplication. And it's defined like that. Um, but that the standard product of two matrices is not just the product of two individual elements. So if I give you two matrices, uh, you're not multiplying 
uh, element wise and such a procedure does exist and is called the element wise product. So this is a terminology called the head mod product, right? So that's what I, I should have been Googling on, but I didn't know that was what it was called. So you need to look that up saying that's the head mod product of two matrices. So there is some new terminology in linear algebra which did not exist in, in, in at least linear algebra for machine learning that did not exist in linear algebra. Actually, uh, this is what is happening. Computer science is redefining uh, several uh, basic mathematical fields, saying we we need we need this kind of uh, uh, approaches. Uh, probabilistic graphical models uh, is an area that has a lots of examples. Uh, it's all about representing probability distributions. You know, haven't we known about probability distributions for a very long time? Yes, indeed, but. Uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, notations uh, that uh, we needed uh, didn't exist. Uh, and uh, so these all came about computer scientists ended up defining all of this stuff, uh, which, which is kind of absolutely new. So we've gone, but then we don't use all the stuff that, but that, they, that they do in mathematics. All right, multiplying vectors. Uh, and uh, so it's a, that's pretty standard stuff. Uh, matrix product properties, uh, what they are. Uh, this is a, a useful example. Okay, fine. We got all of those basic ideas. How are they really used? Uh, and uh, and here is an example of uh, how they're used. Uh, a so-called linear classifier is uh, y is equal to w x transpose plus b. So we are trying to determine whether this image over here, input image, is a cat or a dog or a ship. I suppose this is one of the standard data sets uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is being used. It's got those categories in it. And uh, so what is happening here is the input image, the pixels of that are being stretched into a single column here. And uh, those are the elements uh, x sub i of the vector x here. And uh, we are multiplying the now it has been represented here as a, as a column vector. And uh, we are multiplying it by this matrix W. They're compatible in terms of the number of uh, the shapes are compatible for multiplication. And uh, we uh, do W uh, transpose X plus another vector P, and we get some values which gives you a cat score and a dog score and a ship score. Hopefully, it is done right. Uh, it looks like cat score uh, is negative and dog score is ship. You know, presumably, uh, a negative value is probably a good. Rather than a positive value, so uh, hopefully that that said it is that is a cat, right? It's got the highest score, and that's a linear classifier. So an example of tensors uh, in in so we are using here matrices, we are using vectors, and we, we and we get um, another vector here as output. So that is the a linear classifier, and then we have a linear classifier with bias eliminated. So it is possible to uh, eliminate bias by uh, introducing uh, this whole multiplication we had out here is equivalent to another one where we have an additional element put in with value one over here. So this operation here is exactly the same as this, uh, but it eliminates the B term completely here. So it's an interesting basic trick in uh, machine learning uh, that we use. It's not quite a trick, so it's just uh, basic algebra. And uh, so this is kind of how things work uh, at, 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 at a basic level and then we of course expand on it further. And we talk about linear transformations uh, and uh, and that is, uh, uh, we, okay, we AX equal to B and so you can also look at it more explicitly as N equations in N unknowns and uh, we can uh, view A as a linear transformation of vector X to B. So we say AX equal to B is a linear transformation the linear because these are all of this form a linear form in that it's uh, we are multiple there's the equation to a line that's where the word linear comes into play so that's uh, that's where the linearity comes in and um, and then sometimes uh, we wish to solve for the unknowns uh, uh, unknowns x equal to x1 through xn when a and b provide constraints sometimes we have that situation we have constraints to for a and b so these are the kinds of things that goes on and then there are definition of identity matrix and an inverse matrix. So um, uh, matrix inversion is a powerful tool. Uh, 
we don't use it that much, but they give you a very quick solution to a problem saying, what is the solution uh, in, in those kinds of uh, matrix uh, manipulations we saw earlier on? Why can't you just take a uh, inverse and uh, that immediately provides you a solution? And it requires the, an identity matrix, which might unfortunately be singular and so on. So the matrix inverse, the inverse of a square matrix, A defined as A inverse A equal to I, and we can uh, solve uh, uh, AX equal to B as follows. So let's say we have A and B, and then uh, we want to solve for the value of X. So it says that is nothing but X is equal to A inverse of B. And uh, I'm not saying it's just exactly that the problem we saw earlier on with the cat, but these are the kinds of other operations that we need. So you may want to review all of this. So solving simultaneous equation is another one. Um, System of equation, linear regression. In basic machine learning, we typically start with studying what is linear regression, uh, which is uh, given, uh, let's say, a, a vector as input, we want to predict a value, a scalar as output. Uh, the scalar typically is another real value in regression. In classification vector as input, we want, uh, we want the values for a set of uh, labels, and uh, that's what we saw in the cat example. Linear regression would say, simply give me a value continuous value and uh, that's linear regression. So um, uh, so instead of AX equal to B uh, form, uh, so the, the, the kind of equations we saw occurs in linear regression, um, we would have uh, uh, a phi is the, is the, uh, is, is the design matrix. Oh, that's another terminology. Uh, what kind of matrices occur in, in machine learning? A design matrix is a common one. A design matrix, uh, as rows and columns corresponding to your data set, in the sense uh, the rows uh, uh, the rows uh, may correspond to the uh, to the uh, samples, and the columns correspond to the features, the standard pattern recognition terminology. So I have a data set consists of n samples, and each sample has d features. That's an n by d matrix. All right. I mean, of course, you got to organize it properly. So m by n design matrix. And uh, so that is a design matrix, and uh, and we could say, well, uh, I have your da data set, which is your n uh, m, your data set of uh, all the samples, and uh, tell me what should be the W that will convert it to uh, to uh, T. What is T? T is the target values for the sample T one through T n. So I have uh, the design matrix for every one of the the samples that I have for corresponding to the rows, I have a value for uh, what is the target uh, value for that. And uh, this is a problem of linear regression here. So that should be the output. And so this becomes a question of uh, we need to be so that uh, task is we need to uh, determine the weight W to be used with M features to determine the output. And uh, we can write it like this also. Uh, X is the input, W is a set of weights that, that we, we would like to use so that the output Y, uh, which can be also written like this. So we want to determine what is the value of output Y. So this is the form AX equal to B occurs in linear regression in machine learning. So why should we learn AX equal to B is uh, this is one way to formulate linear regression problem. I refer to this as a closed form solutions. So if I want to do linear regression, I just organize it as a design matrix, and I know the target values. And this says all you have to do is invert your matrix. There it is. You know what is the machine learning problem here, right? Um, and uh, how do you how do you solve the problem? X is equal to A inverse B. It says well, there are you. These are closed form solutions to the problem. Is uh, a matrix inversion? Invert the matrix if you can. That's it. And uh, the problem is, again, the, the inverse may not exist and so on. So there are practical issues, uh, maybe too large and so on. A is a huge matrix. A is a design uh, matrix here, all right? So that's a huge matrix. Uh, then, of course, there's a standard method called Gaussian elimination and so on, all right? So uh, uh, this is something about uh how these things you know gaussian elimination I'm not, I'm not going to teach gaussian elimination we don't use it that often but uh, there's a very classic closed form solution you might want to look at it saying okay why don't we use it disadvantage of closed form solutions 
if A inverse exists, uh, the same A inverse can be used for any given B, uh, and uh, but uh, A inverse cannot be represented with sufficient precision. Hmm. It is not used in practice. And uh, Gaussian elimination also has disadvantages, numerical instability, division by small number, order n cubed for an n by n matrix. Uh, its software solutions use value of b in finding x, so on. So there are all kinds of issues there. Issues of how many solutions for uh, ax equal to b exist and so on. And um, anyway, it goes on to definitions. So you may want to look at these things, um, conditions for solution and uh, here is an example of, uh, <laughs> it's a good example for students to look at, right, when you're taking a course, use of a vector in regression, a design matrix has n samples d features and then what are the, uh, so there's student number one, student number two, student number three and uh, for each student uh, there are three features, number of hours studied, number of hours playing games and number of classes missed, right? So those are the features. And the uh, target vector is the grade they got in the course, 87, 75, or 63. And uh, for instance, the student who, uh, who studied 10 hours and played three hours played games and missed zero classes and got the highest score. And the student who uh, studied only five hours, one hour playing games, Missed a lot of classes, got only 63, all right. There's a subtle message to the students, uh, right? <laughs> okay, so it's a regression problem. So we would say, well, I studied this many hours, I studied eight hours, uh, I was playing games for, uh, you know, two hours, and then I missed half the classes, what grade am I going to get, right? So this is saying, uh, so it, it, we are able to predict that because we would have, we would have figured out uh, the the uh, matrix that we need to multiply the student's feature vector by uh, to give you the value in the form a x equal to b right x is this uh, vector of three values uh, a is the is the matrix that is uh, learned from these how did we learn it well we learned it by using matrix uh, inversion or Gaussian elimination and we got this right so this is a regression problem right so there's a closed form solution to the problem right away we can do that. So there are problems with, with these closed form solutions, and so we move on to uh, machine learning approaches to that. Ah, I guess they don't, we don't do that here, but uh, when, you, when you study regression, uh, we say, so the closed form solutions have a problem. Uh, so what is the machine learning solution to the problem? It says typically when you go back to linear regression in the introductory machine learning course, uh, we uh, do um, you know things like gradient descent. We say we start with some value for the matrix you're looking for and uh, we also define a, a loss function now in terms of the sum of squared errors that is the total amount of mistake you make uh, that matrix matrix you started with with mistakes in terms of what should have been the output in the learning set and um, what is the value you're getting and you sum, sum it over all the n samples and we want to minimize it and says well we are getting this kind of an error and we need to reduce that error and we reduce that error by taking the uh, gradient uh, of the sum of squared errors and then uh, using the gradient updating wt plus 1 is equal to wt minus eta times the derivative the sum of squared errors the derivative has a simple form and so we iterate until uh, we, we approach a, a minimum and then we could also use a it is a validation set or something to see where to stop and so on, right? That would be the machine learning solution. But we want to know <laughs> that you don't necessarily have to take the machine learning solution because it can, it does have a closed form solution in a simple type of setting. But we go on to to uh, to more sophisticated uh, methods uh, as we need it. All right, what is this about norms? Is a pretty standard thing measuring the size of a vector. Uh, you know, norms map vectors to non-negative values, and uh, and what's the definition? The couple of couple of uh, triangle inequality and so on. Things like LP norm, and um, and uh, norms occur uh, in even a linear regression problem. Okay, so x is a vector. By the way, I'm putting up putting all these slides. They're all on the public side, of course. 
but as I finish this, I'm trying to put them on the Piazza site also. So you know which ones I, I used uh, in this version of the course I taught. So there are two places you can refer to. I don't think I put it out there yet. I'm having a little problem with all the fonts. Maybe one of you know, I actually, I had originally in my slides, in PowerPoint, uh, I used Euclid. Euclid has a nice, beautiful mathematical symbol. And um, when I went to a new version of uh, PowerPoint, it uh, it doesn't have Euclid, surprisingly. Anyone experience not having Euclid font on your PowerPoint? Anyway, if you can <laughs> look at it, let me know. I don't know why. The latest version of Microsoft PowerPoint does not offer Euclid font. And Euclid is the most beautiful mathematical symbol font. Of course, some of you may say, look, I don't use PowerPoint for equations. I always use uh, LaTeX or Overleaf or something like that. I know, I know that. There you can control it better, but but I'm having, having this problem. So it's all showing up in a funny way that X uh, is supposed to be Euclid, nice mathematical symbol. It looks like it's in the aerial symbol and so on. So I'm kind of a, you know, I love the fonts, different kinds of shapes, what they mean and that kind of thing. So I have to figure out what to do. How does one download Euclid, you know? The closest thing to Euclid is uh, Times Roman. Times Roman comes out reasonably for uh, for math. But not as nice, right? LaTeX, of course, you can completely control what font you want, but you have to struggle through the font definitions. Anyway, that's just an aside because they look funny here. They don't look like the previous uh, fonts we were using. So we have, but still, at least it's bold. X is a vector and W is a weight vector. And we have, we just saw the Y could be a linear transformation of W transpose X. Uh, and we may have, in linear regression, we kind of uh, don't quite use. Uh, Access we use a nonlinear basis functions phi j, and uh, so the samples uh, become the y is the output for a given x and a set of weights is w naught the bias here, and then uh, this is the form that it takes. Uh, so if, if you're trying to solve a linear regression problem using the machine learning approach, we say, well, what are we trying to minimize? So we have to define a loss function. So what we're trying to do is we have set up points. We want to get the equation that best represents it. And um, so it could be like a straight line or it could be a sinusoid. And the loss function we are defining here is the sum of squared errors. And the sum of squared errors is, of course, this part. Y of x comma w, Tn is the nth sample, and we're taking the square of that. And we put a half here because we're going to be differentiating it. and and we have a square over here, and we take the derivative of that two, and this two will cancel off. Uh, but we also add this additional term to that. It's called the norm penalty, right? Norm penalty is a, is a very standard thing we do in machine learning. Linear regression, we put a norm penalty. Rather than simply try to minimize the sum of squared errors, we say not only do that, but also make this w, the weight vector you're going to get, have as small a length as possible. So it's kind of introducing a prior into the problem. This kind of a crux of uh, what is deep learning is uh, we bring in priors, which is some prior knowledge we have. It's not like a Bayesian prior. Right? That's enough specifically probabilistically defined. So these are some prior knowledge we, we bring into it uh, to solve the problem. And why do we bring this one in? Why do we have, why do we need to bring this? Is, this is uh, the importance is controlled by lambda. Lambda is very small. Uh, the uh, this norm penalty doesn't matter. The lambda is very high. That norm penalty uh, becomes important. So the second term is a weighted norm called a regularizer. Ah, the answer is given here to prevent overfitting. So if it is if it gets values kind of. Uh, and, and gets this vector to be very large, W to be very large, uh, uh, then what is happening is some of the values are very high along the axes, right? And, uh, and that means you have, you are going out of the way to fit this problem. When you go out of the way, it means you're trying to get an exact fit for the points, for a straight line or for a curve or what have you. And there's a danger in it, uh, which is that you're overfitting the problem. All right. If I give you a set of points in a sinusoid, and uh, okay, you should get a rough approximation. But if there is some variation in the noisy, noisiness of the data, and you're trying to fit every single point, right? That's not how you draw a curve after doing some physics experiments, right? 
and you're supposed to draw a smooth curve over there. So that's a prior you're putting in saying draw a smooth curve. So that is what is happening here. So this says we are trying to figure out the weights W that minimizes uh, the sum of squares, but also the uh, so the loss function is defined that. Okay. So um, uh, this is something more about the LP norm. L, so that was like what's called as an L2 norm, right? The square. Where did the square come in? Why not? Why not just the uh, just the uh, uh, difference uh, that becomes L1 norm or L2 norm or L3 norm? L, L2 L2 norm is the most popular popular norm. And why is it like a popularity or what? Uh, actually, there is a nice uh, uh, reason to use the L2 norm. Um, if, if you formulate the problem uh, probabilistically, when you uh, formulate the linear regression problem, saying there's a noise involved, the sinusoid, has, they're not perfectly along a uh, sinusoid, but there is some noise involved, the values are all corrupted. So it's a, it's, a, it's a sinusoid, but not exactly. There are points that are noisy all over, but overall the pattern looks like a sinusoid. So if you want to bring in... Um, a noise model, then you can define the whole problem as uh, uh, a, a probabilistic problem, and you would like a maximum likelihood solution to the problem in probabilistic terms. And when you formulate it as a maximum likelihood problem, uh, you would uh, turn out, and if the noise you are adding is Gaussian, so there is an underlying uh, underlying phenomenon which is sinusoidal. After you get the sinusoid value mapping x to y. You are also bringing in noise that is Gaussian, specifically Gaussian noise. So it could go uh, go high or low, it, but the mean is uh, located along the, the true curve there, right? Then Gaussian has this uh, quadratic property. If you remember, if you know the uh, uh, equation to the to the Gaussian, it involves uh, x minus mu whole squared. The squared is the is the quadratic term, and so that kind of ends up. Uh, uh, for you defining the L2 norm. Right? So L2 norm is, uh, is is a good choice and that's what typically is used. So it's not just popularity, but it's mathematically justified. Here's another one, which is not a, I don't think it's a math term, it's not a mathematics term. And uh, it's for uh, saying, what is the size of a matrix? Hmm. So we can talk about the size of a vector in terms of what is the length of that vector in this uh, in this multidimensional space, similar to L2 norm, we can also define uh, uh, the size of a matrix, and that has a terminology. Occasionally, in deep learning, you come across this 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 expression, Frobenius uh, and uh, Frobenius norm. Uh, so, layers of neural network involve matrix multiplication, and uh, regularization is to minimize the Frobenius of eight matrices over wi layers that's interesting so this is saying that uh, your your goal is to take the take the criterion j this is a regularized j jr is equal to j and we're saying uh, instead of sum of squared errors sum of squares of the weight vector we're saying uh, minimize this quantity and this is the sum of all the uh, weight matrices and layers of a neural network involve ma ma matrix multiplication. It says this is what we need to we need to minimize. That's an interesting concept that we can formulate the problem like that mathematically, not necessarily always simply as uh, as a gradient descent. You can look at it like this. It's minimizing the Frobenius norm. So if you haven't come across the Frobenius norm, which is not a very common ter uh, terminology in linear algebra, this is where it comes from. So there are a few terms here. Uh, missing in standard linear algebra such as Hadamard multiplication and uh, Frobenius norm and so on. Angle between vectors is, is quite well known. If I give you two vectors, the angle between the two is given by the cosine uh, distance between the two. This is a similarity between two vectors is uh, uh, measured by the cosine uh, of the angle between them, which is uh, written like this and the nice thing about cosine is that it's a value between uh, 0 and 1 right right cosine is between 0 and 1 and if the two inputs are exactly the same the value uh, uh, the distance between the two is 0 and the cosine is equal to 1 so it's a maximum and when it's the same two vectors you are giving me 
So, so this says what is the uh, what is the uh, similarity? That's a, it's a powerful measure. I give you two vectors and ask you how similar are these two vectors. I give you two images and say here is the cat image and here is another cat image, and uh, how similar are these two cats? Uh, if it is exactly the same, you could use the uh, cosine cosine angle, right? If, if they're off by one pixel, <laughs> you're going to have a problem. But exactly the same, then the similarity. So cosine will give you give you that. So you may want to be familiar with that part of it. Diagonal matrices, okay. Okay, this is uh, useful when you are dealing with uh, covariance matrices. Uh, and uh, in uh, oh, okay, we're almost out of time here. Uh, I didn't even get to probability theory, but uh, let me just mention it. I'm going to leave the probability theory for you all to look at. I think you've had probability theory before. There is not uh, that many new things other than saying there is the Bernoulli binomial distribution. You may want to review those kinds of things. Uh, and uh, what else do you have? Gaussian distribution, very standard stuff. Um, one, I will always emphasize that uh, the kind of pro probability terminology that you want to be become very familiar with for machine learning or deep learning is two rules in probability. One is called the sum rule of probability. The other one is called the product rule of probability. All right, and they occur. Most of the mathematics here is either application of sum rule or probability or the or the product rule of probability again and again. Right. And uh, what are those two rules? Uh, is because we, we're dealing with multiple variables. Right? It's not about a single variable. So when you have, um, so we're always talking about the joint distribution of two variables, or the conditional distribution of two variables, or the marginal distribution of one variable out of two. So uh, these rules of probability, sum rule and product rule, are used. Um, for instance, sum rule is if you have a joint distribution of two variables, A and B. Uh, and I wanted uh, marginal distribution of one of those two variables, A and B. Uh, you obtain it by the sum rule of probability. You say sum over all the other variable you're not interested in. That's the sum rule of probability. So you, how to eliminate? You know, typically you have a joint distribution of multiple variables. We want to know uh, of one of those variables, and that's the sum rule. And product rule is uh, of the form. Uh, the joint probability of uh, two variables is given by the product of the marginal of one of them and the conditional of the other given this one, right? So that's called the, um, so you need to review. Uh, and remember that that is, th those two occur in all these equations. Uh, and also there is this idea of covariance matrices, how de dependent two variables are. And uh, here is an example of a covariance matrix uh, where the the variables are all independent, and so it is uh, just a diagonal matrix with the rest are zero here. I guess the distribution kind of looks like this. And you may also want to review when you do the probability theory part, uh, study the part about uh, independence uh, and uh, and uh, and correlation. All right, independence and correlation. Uh, independence is a much stronger requirement. All right, then then correlation. So uh, so there are some examples over there in terms of um, uh, how uh, two variables uh, may have a, a correlation of zero but still not be independent. Hmm. So the uh, correlation is zero, but they're still not uh, independent. All right, independent is a very strong strong requirement. So you may want to study what is meant by independence and what is meant by correlation. And we're dealing with so those are all useful concepts to be aware of. Covering the other set of slides, it just occurred that this was this had a little bit of probability in it, so I kind of threw that in. That's the entire set of right efficiency. Okay, all this uh, standard stuff, symmetric matrix, orthogonal decomposition, eigenvector, ah, eigenvector, eigenvalue. This type of stuff is all principal component analysis thinking, right? So. Uh, so that's not what we spend too much time, but occasionally we come up about saying, well, isn't that the same as principal components analysis? Uh, and so on. So eigen decomposition, all of this stuff. Ah, I have some Python code for eigenvalue, eigenvector over here. Okay. What is eigen decomposition, positive, definite, SVD, and all this? Collaborative. Ah, this is an important topic collaborative filtering. 
uh, if you are interested in recommendation systems, I think some of you work for Amazon or something like that, right? <laughs> That's what they're doing, always recommending what else uh, you could buy. And uh, recommendation systems uh, uh, have various solutions. A famous solution is called collaborative filtering, uh, where you have huge, uh, huge vectors of all the products uh, they want to sell. And then they have uh, all the people who bought some of those products. So you have, you're dealing with different types of vectors here. Now, how do we uh, go about uh, saying, okay, this person bought this product and what should we recommend them? Collaborative filtering is a way of doing it. It's just matrix manipulation. So if you want to study that, this is where you come. Solution, right? There are deep learning solutions to it. PCA is a, PCA is a whole example. If you study all of uh, linear algebra, uh, okay, let's now put together all of this, a simple machine learning algorithm called PCA. It can be derived using only knowledge of basic linear algebra, right? So like some of the closed form solutions. So it's a linear algebra problem. All right, that's a lot, all right? Do you have to study all of this for the quiz next week? <laughs> no, that's a, that's a bit high. How shall we do it, Aditya? We'll say, okay, you study this part at least. P I think PCA may be a bit too much. Uh, for for uh, for unless you you think it's okay fair game <laughs> all right uh, so uh, so we uh, I'm discussing with my teaching assistants what should be what should be in the in the quiz next week and uh, so uh, what's fair game I mean there's a lot of stuff in but there's not all of linear algebra there's linear algebra for machine learning what should you know about linear algebra for machine learning so that that's that's the focus but even there there is uh, there is quite a bit and uh, okay.